And in part two, we will focus on building a complete kitchen and even create few design drawings. Please feel free to download the shared final design so you can follow the demonstration better. As always, this session is filled with many interesting sketching and modeling tips and shortcuts. And now let's get started. Welcome to part two of custom cabinet design with Shaper 3D. We'll go right ahead and delete all these sketches. Oh. Look for all of them just to show you that we don't need them anymore. Very good. This is a new file too. I have the original file saved. So in case I make a mistake here, I can always restart. So this is actually a finished module. Now I would like to have the same object on the right side. Very good. But before I do this, let's make a new folder and then these two I will move in there and let's call this cabinet drawer door use names that make sense very good so the main reason why I did this check this out I can now select the drawer Go to more, mirror, select the right face, keep original, yes, done. There, I made a copy of it. Perfect, very nice. On the right side, I would like to have another copy of this one because I would like this handle to be actually on the right side. Okay, so how do I do this? Here, now I will have to select the correct one. Very nice. Again, I select just the folder because when I select the folder, I not only make a copy of all the objects, but actually also the folder. So here now, I would like to rename this. This is just cabinet door. Very good. How do we fix the gap? Easy. We can select everything. More. Translate. And drag this point to that point. Done. There we are. Very nice. To go in, the drawer is actually obsolete. So we remove this. Very nice. Both objects I will select and I will move them up using the grid. Look at that, it perfectly lined up. So, left and right. I could otherwise also have moved it up to the top edge and then moved it down two millimeters. So here, now I will do this. I will go to there. And so two millimeters removed is one, seven, uh, seven, one, six. There we are. Very nice. Cool. Look at that. That is how easy it was actually to create two new versions of this. Now I would like to build a really big cabinet. I will select this one, copy, and move this over. I always trust the grid and snapping a lot, but there can always be mistakes, which is why I personally really like using the align tool a lot. Very good. So the whole piece should actually be 1,540 millimeters tall. Okay, so I'll do this. Select this, 
540 millimeters, oh, quite tall. Do the same here. Very nice. Okay, so tap on the screen somewhere to deselect anything and move this one up. You can zoom in. Actually, it fits perfectly. Very good. Because we will later build a top shelf, this I will remove. Okay, good. Now I will select this one and this one, and then mirror here. Very good. Okay, and then you and you click on the up arrow by two millimeters. But when we select this, you see, oh, this is actually four millimeters. Not a big deal. Select it again. Minus two because the arrow was facing down. Another two millimeters up. And there you see four millimeters. And here, yeah, fantastic, two millimeters. Very nice. Now I will have to check a little bit how this design looks. So first we could call this maybe cabinet two doors tall. Good. So there's cabinet one and where's the Where's the door? Uh, so this is all in there. See, this is not good. We would like to split this up. So you and you. Okay, so it's four and three. That means you, we drag you to there. And this we can call door and move it to there. We want to be more precise. We could call this door up. And this is door bottom. This bottom door, however, now again is the same door as here. We when we do custom cabinet design, obviously we want to be able to reuse the same elements that makes the design and manufacture more efficient, also more cost effective. Very good. Uh, on top, I would like to cover this back area. And let me show you how we can do this. So here we have this bottom plate. We'll make a copy, move this one up. Okay. And this edge again, I would like to line up with this edge. Very nice. And okay, very good. And just move this down for a moment to show you something. You see here the material thickness is 16 and we always have a six millimeter cap. So that means this face I would like to move down by minus 10. So I will have a six millimeter gap to cut into and all this translate to there. Very good. And then from this, I would like this object to remove keep the body. Very nice. There you see we have the groove. Cool. So the um, Again, actually, this board is very useful to give the whole construction actually stability. It really puts it, puts these walls into a perpendicular arrangement. Then with this done, we could hide the top door, select this, Move this up, move this up 
I will turn this on or back to that one and oh I had something else selected here yeah it is perfectly centered so here in this case actually I will leave it because this is already the lower shelf and where it's positioned it nicely seals this part I could look into it and for example as you can see in this mode also adjust the position of all the shelves now as a question how are the shelves being hold in position do we draw at even positions holes into the inside surface of these walls and then via pins give this kind of like grid system so we could customize the position of the shelves very good so uh work surface let's make um a work surface from what super easy select maybe this one here double tap move this up that should be 40 millimeters nice and thick then this I would like to translate line up to there very good I am at the top of my design with this object selected move to here there it is and now we can call this work surface there we are yes okay one more time translate zoop, to there very good this should be 600 so we have a good overhang now the question is how much do we have an overhang to the right side i keep this at the moment flush very good this is actually not correct do this one more time oh that was actually wrong yeah this edge there very nice cool okay so we have the work surface uh, tall a single a double mirrored let's do a hanging unit from all this This is actually here the easiest one. So I will make a copy. Move this one to here. Pause, my daughter's coming in. And we would like to have the door handle at the bottom part and at the bottom here you see it's on the top part okay so hmm, how do we do this here is our part I will move this a little bit further up select this group one more time go to more mirror and click at the bottom face and just mirror this down there we are Okay, I actually also created a copy by accident. So let's undo this. So here, keep originals off. There we are. Pretty good. Okay. Alternatively, I could have actually directly selected this, go to more mirror, keep the original. And simply select top face of the work surface. There we are. And then I could move this one up. There are always multiple ways how we could do something. Okay, so the 
lower edge should actually be 570 millimeters above the work surface. So before we continue from here, let's draw a line. So 860, that's actually from the ground to the work surface. Lock this. From there, we draw another line, 570. You can also here lock this. And then the height for the last one, we set it at 280. Again, this is all custom. We can modify those as much as we want. This one here is important. There, just draw two horizontal lines. Very good. And the reason why I did this is the following. So now I can select here the whole group. I will move my widget to this corner, rotate around, move this one up till it lines up perfectly. There we are. Cool. Okay, so now the fun starts. This we move down till it lines up. And you see how this is being fused together. Let's do the same here. Very good. This one we don't need anymore. That's not necessary. This has to go down. 280, very good. So that means you can also simply type this in. This one we can remove. So here, how do we move this one down? Uh, either this way, and is it flush? It is flush, very nice, very good. Then this we bring down. Now here, this is interesting. Now we have our offset. So I will do here again it this way. Very good, flush, and then two millimeters down, two, seven, six. Very nice. Okay, good. Here we have a little bit of a gap in the back. So if we would like to close this, we would model it exactly the same way like here. I will keep it as is. The door actually had the handle is actually on the wrong side. I would like it to be there. So how could we easily do this? Mm -hmm. Let's try this out. See, I double tapped on that face that actually made a sketch plane. Now I drew a line and I will select this, go to mirror, select this line. There it is. And delete. And this sketch, you know, I can delete too. Super easy. Okay, good. The whole unit should be 110 millimeters. This is 500. Sorry, I was wrong. It should be 1000 millimeters. This is 500. Okay, so I need to move this one over by another 500. One thousand, very nice. And I would like to do a little reference test. So here I drew a line. Drew, draw the line up. Okay, it's flush. Very nice. You see, I just drew this line exactly where the two cabinets actually meet. Okay, so this is done. Oh, look at this. This is wrong. This one here. 
copy and then move it down. Is this actually flush? See, it's not flush. So double tap, drag, drag, done. There we are. Oh, not yet. I'm glad actually this happened. Because you have to be careful, really, how we do this. Meaning, where do you start clicking and where do you stop clicking? And this is 60 millimeters. Very good. The thickness didn't change. So now I would like this, this, and this. Can we actually do this all at the same time? Let's see. From this edge to that face. It did. Very good. Direct modeling in Shaper is actually very, very enjoyable. There, closed it. Very good. So here, how do we do this one? That's actually pretty easy. Double tap, double tap. And mirror. To there. Very good. Now, double tap, double tap. And two millimeters. Let's measure. What's this? Uh, four, okay, two millimeters more. Double tap, double tap, two. Very good. So here we have a distance of four at the bottom. And here we have a distance of two millimeters. Very good. If we would like to, we could actually put in a shelf that is in between. This one here, for example, makes no sense. That is too, um, too long, or we would need a horizontal one. This actually, we will rotate 90 degrees. So like this, bring this down, bring this up. Then the same here. Uh, perfect grid snapping, very nice. Uh, the the door folder here has again both doors, so this would be door left and door right. Wunderbar, cool. This now we can delete. This we could call cabinet wall hanging. That's actually a really nice setup. The lines here all are lined up. It's nice, symmetrical, very good. So you see, it is actually very easy out of one starting block to produce many individual pieces. So let me show you now to bring this lecture to an end, how we can create a product drawing. It's very easy. We can select, for example, all. Then we go to more and say, sorry, not more, my fault. We go to add and drawing. Then we can select all the parts. I would like to include next. This one, let's call this assembly. I do not want to include base views based on where you are. Select the paper size. Um, landscape, yes. I will set this to 120 and continue. No, we have an empty document. It says the assembly, the time, units, paper, etc. All this can be changed here later. And we would like to bring in a front view. So 
views and front, there we are, 120. We can tap actually this 120 and say 110. That doesn't fit. 150 is too small. 120 is good. Maybe move this to here. So then a right view there. And a top view. I bring this to there. Try to zoom in a little bit more. Okay, it's running up and bring it down. Very good. This one you maybe a little bit over. Give this some breathing space. Very good. Then close. Now we can add some basic dimensions to this. So somebody can understand how big this whole unit is. These two lines I can select and say except same here bring this down we want the dimensions to be nicely aligned so not as crazy positions so it's easy on your eyes very nice what about the max height here you see i have to zoom in so i can select really the top size very good okay nice oh, what about here i would like this and bottom part of the work surface well what about the height of the work surface i may put this to there i can also select a point two points and here and this edge no i'm lining everything up and maybe this point and we will select this point for the total height can you see how informative actually this already gets now you can continue adding more and more details to it what might maybe be be useful this is our top view there we could show them the height uh, sorry not the height the depth maybe we group this together so this one we delete maybe make this one line up with that one very good okay very nice let's go back I would like to show you something really cool. So we will uh, select this one and we move it down minus 20. Actually, let's go minus 100. Hold on one second. I want to make sure. I think I made a mistake here. So minus 100. Okay, good. So let's go back. You see drawing is out of sync. Click the update drawing and it will update it. And I think I actually managed to put it right back to where it was. I move it down significantly. There, you see, perfect. So every object that actually is being brought over will be adjusted. Now we set, this is actually 860 and then from here we have a 570, very good. So, not very difficult to get back to where we were.
Ta -da. Very good. So how can we create a drawing of just one unit? Let's select this one. Create drawing. And then we can call this ca cabinet drawer plus door. Obviously, it's the same name, 120. Very good. There we are. It actually created all the base drawings for you already. Front, side, top. And I could go ahead now and say this. I move over a little bit there. This I move to here. 110. Okay. Robot 1 to 10. See if this works based on the size of the paper. Yeah, we can actually squeeze it on. Okay. Oh, move this in and we can line this up. Very good. Let me show you something nice. We are still in the principal view. There's a dashed rectangle below. If you click it, it shows you all the hidden lines. Very nice. Now here, for example, we could, once we're done, say, well, the whole base is this white. The toe kick has this dimension. Very good. From the top view, this is 500. But then the inner space is this distance. So here I'm starting to run out a li little bit out of space. So maybe all those I move up a little bit. Very good. There. 16, 16. This is for example here to tight. If this is the same object or same material thickness, I could only dimension it at one position. And let's go back. There's one last thing I would like to show you. So I will just select this part. That is a repetitive building object element that really carries over through many parts. So we could call this site single. And 110 definitely base views. Okay, very good. Actually, this one I will remove. There. And here in this case, no, I could add all the information just for this particular part. Zoom in a little bit. There, very nice. Here, there, this is six, three, getting a little bit confusing. Maybe move the six over there, there, and so forth. So, with this dimension system then a craftsperson actually inside a shop knows exactly the dimensions and how to cut something and you saw it's very easy to just adjust every uh, element sorry not to adjust give a dimension and or drawing to 
complete group or individual pieces. Here, this one I will make really white to show you that this even applies to the thickness of an object. Obviously, we don't want that. Very good. So, update, all good. And that basically sums everything up these drawings then later we can also export as dwg pdf etc for further sharing of the information and this is then basically everything about how to design a very basic master custom cabinet make copies with it via copy and paste and adjust it via direct modeling and then use the drawing module to create precise documentation of that furniture family.